about that. Yeah, I don't know how to change my name, but you can't see my name, so. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. We, we got we got you sorted. <laughs> my my internet, my data is giving me shit all day. So yeah. <laughs> That that sounds about right. Uh, typical of a drummer to be late. <laughs> Always on time, but late. There you go. Always on time, but late. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> okay, let's let's just get uh, Innes uh, in on you. Innes, uh, unmute yourself and and have a word so we can hear you. Come on, Innes, you can do it. There we go. Yes, I'm here. Alrighty, the vocalist. Always vocal, but never around. Yeah. <laughs> nah, sorry. Um, <laughs> this is my first time using Zoom, so. Uh, well, there you go. I'm not sorted. It's, it's not that bad. Eh? Not at all. Welcome to Talk to Trev. I've got the band Zen Garden. Okay, let's lads, let's just let me get you straight to the point here. When I got the the EPK uh, from your manager, I was like, open it up. It's like, okay, this would be a standard regular EPK with those colours. I was like, do I need to light up or take shrooms? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a bit psychedelic. Like eh? <laughs> to explain it, okay, it's like it's like discovering all the editing tools that you can actually use in your PC and throwing everything that you have into one thing, <laughs> and then it comes out. <laughs> okay, so um, whoever wants to wants to answer the questions, you guys can go for it. I'll, I'll leave it up to you to to choose. Um, let me just run through the through the names there. So we've got Dolphin Bass. Okay, we've got Chris on guitar, and Chris is homeschooled. That's interesting. I'm homeschooling my. <laughs> My, my kid, my eight-year-old, so, yeah. Uh, and then we got Yanni on drums, and we got Innes on the vocals. Okay, who came up with the name Zen Garden? Wow. I think that was uh, cool, uh, uh, basically all of us, actually. We, we, we stuck with the name Zen, but we, we struggled with the name Garden. Because I think we, we said it was, what, what was it, Chris, Rudolf? Zen Culture. Zen Culture, yeah. Zen culture. yeah Zen culture. Then I suggested Zen and Now. And then everybody stuck to Zen Garden and it just sort of, yo, we were literally yeah, dead, our, sitting in a room and discussing the... Our first name for the band was like Perde Patroli. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is that where it comes, I've seen on your Facebook post, you say, um, check this Perde out and all that sort of stuff. When we recorded our second EP, we recorded at this guy called JP um, Testafani. So he's this, he's this old Italian dude that recorded, he's like recorded with Fuku Felicicara and um, what are they, A-King or whatever. And um, he has the best Afrikaans slang we've ever come across. He'd say, um, no, I can't say this, or, but then he'd say like, check it back, no, I'm going to fix it now. <laughs> so we got, we got the slang from him. And then when it, when it came to the name, we were all chilling, we were in race together in uh, university. And um, we started jamming together on a regular basis, but we didn't have a name yet. So one night, I think we were busy writing a song and um, we sat together in the room and we were like, we have one of our, it was like one of our first performances coming up as a band now. We were, we were high on herbs as well. So we, we had the name Zen and then it was just like a, a, you know, like a religious light coming down on all of us and we were like Zen God. In the meantime, it was just a smoky <laughs> haze that came out. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. A green very garden. Spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. spiritual. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. What year was that? Yes, that's oh, wow. that was my second 20, year. Yeah. 2018, 2019. 2018, yeah. I think 2018. 2018, yeah. So, I mean, it's a fairly young band. Now, you've got quite a few followers yeah. as well. And, and you've played numerous gigs, and I can see from the EPK and... I mean, you guys are putting yourselves out there, but COVID has kind of fucked it for everybody. Yes, yeah. COVID, no. has, COVID has fucked us over completely because this was our, I call it like our breakthrough year in terms of getting festivals and, you know, like the big, the big performances. Yeah. Big leagues. Yeah. And now because of COVID, all of it has been cancelled. But hopefully we get our breakthrough year, um, you know, still next year. I don't know what they're going to do with the festivals, but luckily we still get to play. But that being said... I think about the the COVID, uh, it gives us the possibility to like practice new stuff and get new content and everything like that. Um, And really, really train our um, own personal skills in our instruments. And I think that's that's a great thing that people can look, look forward to in the future, right? Yeah, I think I think it's right because I think a lot of people are using this as a way of um, getting more. 
Let's put it this way. I think a lot, a lot of bands are um, experimenting with online stuff more than what they would have if, if COVID weren't around. So I think a lot of people are yeah. really in more um, artistic stuff like the videos and the online um, yeah. and that sort of stuff. Uh, have you guys and done it's a learning like that? Yes, but it's been, it's been such a learning curve because no one knows what the fuck they're doing. So um, we did our first online show uh, a while back. So that's available on YouTube and everything now. It's like a 55 minute live show with cameras and whatever. There's no people. But we were planning this for like a month or two now. This was in the time when COVID just started getting to a rough point now. So artists already started with the online shows and whatever. But we, we came to the conclusion people don't want to pay 100 Rand for a ticket. Mm. to watch a show you know online it's it's too much money mm. so we did the show for free and we just put a basket code on it right. um where people can donate if they want to but they don't have to it's for free they can watch the show you know and um that's the way we're trying to take this forward but it is hard because before COVID, we could play on a weekend you know and not make a lot of money but make through the month we've made enough money to to pay for things like going back to the studio and recording or um we had to pay for this video as well and it was quite expensive mm. and now we don't have that luxury yeah yeah the busker thing i think is the way to go because um, everybody else is suffering not just uh, musicians you know i mean but yeah, i must you, say you... like sorry uh, over overall i think it's a pretty fucking decent video that we put up i mean for, for uh, a bunch of guys doing it for the first time we we really put up a proper video and i i would give it to every, anyone to listen to because it's really good content and it's it's uh you know people can listen to it so it's a it's a proper video what what genre is zen garden um it's more like what's the alternative funk type of vibe that's actually yes. quite that's actually, that, that, that probably nails it because l listening this morning um the warden my wife and i we, we're sitting there and, we, and we're listening and i said you know she goes this reminds there's a there's a place in in uh in cape town called cork bay on the ocean and there's a place called the brass bell an iconic place where you go sit in the sun in the afternoon have a couple of dops and there'd be like a blues band or a band or something and, and she's going this is the kind of music that you would listen to while you know sitting at a bar um, chilling out, really relaxed. It's not hyper. It's not yeah. intense. It's like super chilled. So I just said to yeah, yeah, you know, Zen gone. It's, you know, everybody's like saying, you know, like chilled. <laughs> I, think, and... I think that's the that's the one thing that we need to make uh, that we should clarify for ourselves is uh, in the future if we get huge gigs, you know, people aren't gonna stand there and uh, jump in a mosh pit or anything like that. They're gonna stand there and they're gonna listen to the music because it's fucking good music. Mm. Um, and even when sitting at a bar, you know, people stop talking and they, they just start like listening to the music. You know, that's that's a great thing to see when when I'm looking as a drummer to the people. That's awesome. There's there's definitely a chemistry between the four of you because it, it's it's I mean it's such a good mixture of guitars, not over, not too powerful, not not too heavy, drums like swinging man, and and then of course you know the vocals in us. The, you, you, yeah. you, got, you got like a, um, I, was, I was trying to say to my wife, is it got like a raspy, bluesy, contemporary, commercial sound? And it's like, I just couldn't place it. How, how did you, was it just like you woke up one day and said, oh, fuck it, I'm going to sing? <laughs> no, to be honest, I, I was into culture from like a young age. So I did choir and, you know, all that jazz when I was younger. I even went for lessons and whatever. And it's, it's, it's probably going to sound really gay now to people. But I mean, I would recommend it to anyone going to do it. Even if they're not pursuing singing, you learn so much. And then, obviously, I came to a stage in high school where I just stopped. But um, when I went to res, we all did, all four of us in the band did serenade. And I came to a stage where I was like, I want to sing, but I don't want to sing in a group. Mm. And uh, I went to Christian one night and I was like, on class has these open mic nights in uh, Pretoria and um, I was like dude I want to go sing a song would you play guitar for me and he was like yeah cool let's go do it and uh, that's how it started that this was about five years ago okay well I mean you've got a, a really warm I don't know it's like a warm tone to it 
It's it's very appealing, put it that way, without sounding gay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say that, but I think uh, the other thing that happened was over the years, as I've gotten older, because I'm also a regular smoker, and ah, at one stage I was a, there I, we go. I was okay. a, at one stage I was a big drinker as well. So it's like your voice <laughs> evolves into this, but you you don't have I don't I didn't have any control over it. It's just the way it is now. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that I, laugh from the drummer? You just know yeah. the drummer's got <laughs> yeah. stories on you, buddy. Yeah, yeah it's true. Well, <laughs> I, I know one evening uh, we we got drunk at Odd Plus and then we went. He can't. He, he couldn't walk, and then <laughs> I walked with him to home. And uh, then I put him against the tree because he wanted to take pee. And uh, the next thing, I just saw him fell. <laughs> and it, it fell forward and it like broke a tooth or something. So yeah, it was good times. Good times. Yeah. Um, Yanni, drums. Uh, how did this come about? Uh, what the, the drunk thing or the band thing? No, no, the drum thing. How did how did that how did this journey begin for you? Oh yeah. Well, I I actually started uh, music. In, I've started playing uh, piano in like grade four. Uh, and I always wanted to uh, play in a band and I want to play drums. And then uh, a few of my buddies uh, said, yeah, let's start a band. And we, we like uh, placed ourselves in this position, like I'm going to play drums, I'm going to play guitar, whatever. And we never started a band. Uh, and then in, in high school, I, I had music as one of my subjects. Um, and then I started playing drums in grade nine. Um, and then, Sure, I started playing in a few bands. Uh, I started at Swallow 15, um, and they had like a band jam type of thing where they created bands of all the students that they have at their campus. Uh, then I started playing drums um, for, for one of those bands, and then in university, yeah, uh, first year we had to play uh, this first year concert, uh, the Ink Melody. Um, and that's that's why I started playing drums for for our res, and um, I think that's where where most of the guys in the band saw me as a drummer. And um, yeah, obviously when we play, uh, we, we sang in the serenade. Uh, the guys said, "Well, everyone can sing, but why don't we start a band?" And that's where we we became friends and just okay. said, "Well, let's let's give it a shot." Cool, Dolph. Don't think you're getting away from me, man. How's, yeah, how's no, this? I'm how's the slapping of the? How's the slapping of the four string going? Oh yes, man. It's only <laughs> it's such a joy for me. Eh? I love it. I completely love it. When I was young, at about four, my parents took me for piano lessons, and I grew up playing piano. And it was like torture for me because I always had to go and sit alone behind the piano, and it felt like you know, it was like one of those chores that you must do in a day. And then when I came into high school. We were very fortunate that the high school had like orchestras and a jazz band and stuff like that. And I saw there was one oak playing like this fucking huge violin. And then I figured out, okay, cool, that's a double bass. So I um, convinced my parents that I want to leave piano and start playing double bass. And then when I got to playing double bass, I also bought a bass guitar because um, Christian recently bought a normal guitar and we thought like, oh, yeah, we can always play together. And that's where it started, man. And I. I really love it. I feel like, you know, always learning, always looking at what other people are doing. And bass is such an underrated thing where you can actually just show the peasants that listen to this great fucking slap music, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you're a Yucca Pistorius fan. Yes, yes. No, I love him. Uh, God, God's I'm a legend. Fan. I, don't, I will never be able to imitate him or play one of his songs or anything, but I'm a huge fan. Uh, yeah, he's next level. He's next level. And then obviously, Flea is also a big inspiration for me. Right. And um, yeah. Uh, Chris, homeschooler. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, I don't know why that info is there, but me and my brother Rudolf or Dolph was homeschooled together. Um, but uh, yeah, I started out with piano at the same age as him. We had twins just to sort that confusion out. And then uh, during high school, I think in a grade seven, I bought a guitar just to sort of, um, after practicing intense piano, you know, you can pick up the guitar and just learn three chords and there you have your song. 
And then, like Dolph said, he got a bass as well, and then we started jamming. And when I went to go study music at Tux, um, they had this option where you can take a second subject instrument, and one of the options were jazz guitar. So I immediately rooted for the jazz guitar option because, you know, having to do a second instrument means less study and, you know, not a lot of assignments and stuff. <laughs> and through that, I managed to get an electric guitar and then my, I actually almost lost my passion for piano and just played guitar from there on. But uh, my main instrument is actually piano. But uh, the guitar, like Rudolf said, it's, it's such an inclusive thing. You can take it anywhere. There's always other people that can also share a song with you or somebody can sing with you. You know, you can't pack up a piano and go to the sea. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's, what, that's what I love about it and um, yeah it works perfectly in the band so yeah it does I mean I, I, I haven't listened to all of the music um, in fact, no I think I have there's no piano in any of the songs is there no no, no. come on guys I mean three of you play fucking not, piano not here <laughs> yeah we're working on it we're integrating some of the new music look we've already written enough songs for our next EPK we just need the cash so we, we are, are incorporating yeah, we are incorporating new stuff in the songs and whatever. Nice, because I think I think that might um, not that it's already not already filled out, but it would fill it out even more, make it even bigger sound. Yeah, yeah. I because think the the main problem is uh, we're four guys in the band. We can't play piano and uh, guitar at the same time. I think that's the biggest problem. Well, you uh, well you you don't have to. I mean, you could have a keyboard there and you know do a little intro or yeah. something and then I switch over to guitar. I don't think that's the biggest problem. The biggest problem is in South Africa, instrument costs are so fucking high mm. that it's not, it's, it's literally not, you know, an economic viable choice for a lot of people. And that's our, especially when it comes to portable, you know, pianos. Is there a commercial um, sound to, to Zen Garden? Is, is it a commercial success that you're aiming for? Um, no, no, in a, in, no, more, in a sense, we're looking at going over the waters and taking it abroad because you know we make like South African rugby players. If you don't pick us for a fucking home team, then you go play for other countries' team and be the best in the world. So that's what we're mainly aiming to do. That's also why we sing in English to broaden the scope because we know we're all Afrikaans blokes, Bushians, and all those lucky things. But just being able to do it in English. It, it like increases the reach that you can get to people so much more and um, mm. you know the big money is overseas because in South Africa people are very biased in the music industry like if you don't literally know the guy who's running the event chances of you getting into that gig is really small mm. um, because we like found it out the hard way if you literally just rock up to a dude and you introduce yourself you're already so much further ahead of somebody else that doesn't know that oak Mm. And that's actually a bit sad for me because I feel like people who host events that can actually go on Spotify and really like listen to music and see what they like, what people will like, like say now uh, a specific stage of a specific vibe and they just they call the guys they know and say, oh, wait, do you want to go do a show? And then um, those guys go pull through. Like we always joke, we, um, you know, the being in Victoria, we rate ourselves that if you get a geek like Park Acoustics, it's like <clears throat> a breakthrough gig for a band in Victoria, but <laughs> we always joke with each other and say, at least if we get a gig in Park Acoustics in the next 10 years, we will be able to play with Short Straw because they pick Short Straw for every Park Acoustic gig. Do you, do you reckon, <laughs> do you reckon the, the, the market in South Africa is oversaturated? No, what, what, what the problem with the market is, our alternative scene is too small, where if you take it to to Australia, New Zealand, or even like America, you probably know the band, um, what is their, uh, Rainbow Kitten Surprise. If you, if you don't know them, it's like an indie band in America. But the indie scene, when it comes to numbers, it's way smaller than the, you know, the, the lucrative mainstream music. But in, mm. a, in a country like America, where there's so many people, these indie festivals, they get like an absurd number of people going to it. Mm. And then the listens there, they won't get a hundred million view song on YouTube or, you know, Spotify or on Spotify. They're booming at the moment, mm. but, um, they will, they'll always get the numbers in of like seven, eight million listeners or, or views. But I think the industry is changing abroad though. 
the first independent band that's gone like massive now is um, a band from Australia called Sticky Fingers. Right. And they they're busy killing it at the moment. And this is good for us because the problem in South Africa for me is you get a little bit of you get a little bit of fame and fortune, then a, a record label signs you. And the moment they do that, except that they're gonna take a lot of the money, but I think it's fine because they they're gonna make sure the product is successful. Then sometimes they'll hold you back from writing the music that you want to. Because the yeah. moment you're you're writing for them, you have to write for an industry that's already established. I mean what what and is what is the end goal here? Is the end goal to, to be signed or to go abroad and or both? Both. If the if I think if the if if the time comes and the offer is right, we'll get signed. But for for us, the the main objective here is not to play, um, you know, Joburg Day. Even though that's like one of the biggest events you can play in South Africa, the main goal for us is to go to Glastonbury, and fucking play main stage one day. That if if that's not the goal, and we've talked about this, if this is not the goal, then we should stop now. We we don't wanna we don't wanna be one of these South African artists with ninety thousand followers on Instagram and you already get the blue tick because that's how small you 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 can be when you're like South African. We want to be main stage on Glastonbury, you know, ten million followers on Instagram. That's that's a, that's, that's, that's some, main some some high um, objectives to to get to. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but I think uh, that's a that's a good uh, uh, set goal. To, to have just to, to get get everyone positive and say there's a bigger dream outside there. Um, it doesn't help that you think small. It helps that if you if you think big. I mean the probabilities of us getting there is is hard, but you know it's not impossible. It's doable, right? I mean that's the whole point of doing this. It's you know. Yes. And I think that's the thing uh, about uh, after our studies, everyone studied and they finished their studies. Um, just keeping on doing the music thing, you know. There's a lot of bands that I know that started the band that they they wanted to quit after that, you know. How Just do you get how do you get you... noticed with with millions of bands out there? Sure, that's a that's a hard thing. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. There's a lot of luck involved in mm -hmm. this industry, so I, I can't elaborate too much on this. But we were involved in a TV production like a week ago like a massive TV production that's going to be on TV. And um, that was mainly due to luck because we knew the Oak. We knew one of the guys working, working there, but we didn't know he worked there. And he just came to us and he was like, do you guys want to play? And that's by far, it, it was massive. I can't explain to you how yeah. cool it was. Yeah, well, I mean, so, you know, uh, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yes. And, but then at the, at the end of the day, what a lot of people don't understand is you still have to do, you have to graft to get the luck. We've done a lot of shit gigs. We've played at a lot of places, you know, where the sound was horrible. We've we've basked on the street to to give awareness about gigs. We've really we've grafted our asses off, mm -hmm. and it doesn't stop. It's not like we're at a place now where we can stop doing the the, the shit work. You still have to do it. Do, oh, any, uh, oh, is the band endorsed by any company? Nothing. No. no. See, wouldn't that be a good step? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it, to get a, yeah. to get a bit of help of capital would be awesome. Um, but the thing is that people also don't think about this. But there's really a new generation of bands in South Africa that you know are relatively small that are actually fantastic at what they do. Like the quality music that they make are so nice. But you can literally see that the guys are not endorsed, they don't have the right gear, they don't get the right gigs, they don't know who to speak to. There's like a huge gap in the market of upcoming oats that actually have a quality product that they can give, but the execution and the venues and the events and stuff are just not there yet. I, I, I guess getting... Right? Because we are, we are almost in the same boat because we play with each other at these shit gigs. And then when you hear that guy playing that solo or this guy eating that note, you think to yourself, why do we still listen to bands that we've seen 20 or 30 times at one park acoustics? Like, why do they still keep on picking those oaks? So it, it's it's tough, man. But but hopefully um, we can get a breakthrough. I mean, I, I guess the the ideal 
uh, situation to happen is an international endorsement. That would be uh, something yeah. stellar. Yes. Okay, we're, 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 the, fast, we're fast running out of time. So I just want to touch on a couple of things. Okay, so what is the latest single? Uh, it's called Alone. Alone. Alone, right. Okay, that was, you released a, um, like a video for that like three weeks ago or something like that. It was the 10th yeah. of July, yeah. Right, okay, cool. So Alone is the latest single and you can get that all over the place on all the digital platforms, right? Yes, Spotify, yeah. iTunes, all of right, that. Okay, I'll put the links in the description below so that people who are watching and listening can click on the links and find out more about Zen Garden and Facebook, Twitter and wherever the hell you are. Okay, um, you, were, you were talking about like singles and EPs and things like that. Um, is there going to be an album? Not at the Maybe. moment. <laughs> Maybe one day. Okay. <laughs> that was, the, the, that was <laughs> the easiest <laughs> answer to a question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but if I can, if I can just explain, the, the thing is the album is like a, it's like reading a book. It has, even though the songs are a bit different, they're all, all telling a universal story. So you can relate from song one to, you know, like song 11. And we haven't had the chance because we're working and whatever to like spend that amount of time to make, you know, each song build up. Yep. So that's and of course, the COVID's of fucked it for everybody as well. So that yes, doesn't help. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's on the back foot on that one. Um, I want to have a quick uh, rig rundown. Okay, so let's go with Dolph. What are you playing? Um, I'm playing a Fender Jazz Bass that I've recently acquired. <laughs> Just before the lockdown, I went to Nate's and did. Fucking wise choices. <laughs> but anyway, but before that, I used to play a Dreambow acoustic bass. That was epic to play on. But the trouble is with an acoustic, it's never, it's never suitable for every venue that you reach. Because you get out of a reverb if you plug into a bass amp. And it, it doesn't make the sound as full as an electric bass does. So that's why I made the switch to Defender Jazz. And it was obviously a lifelong dream for me to play on a quality bass. And actually like plug into a rig and you know the epic thing about Defender Jazz is I always know it's going to work. With the acoustic, it was... Always a 50-50 chance yeah. of something not working out. Okay, so an endorsement by Fender would be fucking unreal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Chris, what are you playing on? Yeah. Um, at the moment, I'm playing a Telecast Deluxe um, from the, uh, I think it's a 1970s Ventera series. Mm, nice. Very nice guitar. Um, also just got it quite close to lockdown. Um, but since then, I've had a few opportunities to use it with a proper amp and stuff. And um, I was a big fan of single coil pickups. But when I moved over to the deluxe with the humbuckers, it blew me away. Um, I was really impressed. And I can actually say now that I'm more of a humbucker sort of guy mm, instead of the okay. single coil that I used to be. Okay. Why is that? Is it just gives you more tonal or, or what I, is it? I, I just feel with the band... You know, actually only having two instruments because the drums isn't an instrument. Um, the sound what is are you saying, <laughs> <laughs> The sound is, is very thin. So if you take the humbuckers, it, it fills up more the space in the song mm. than the single coil. Mm. The single coil cuts through, you know, you get yeah. through the mix. The more humbuckers sharp, yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Yanni, drums, what are you playing on? <laughs> um, I'm playing on a Silver Star. Um, Summer kit. Uh, um, I would really love. An I agree I with you. In a, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Bark the shit out of the drummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking uh, dogs. No, so, uh, I'm playing a Silver Star summer kit. Uh, I would love some endorsements from, uh, uh, you know, maybe Yamaha. Summer is actually a great uh, brand. I love playing on Summer. Uh, with an Italian and minor symbols, um, I just bought uh, an Italian uh, what's it, diamond series symbols with right. hats and a crest. Um, then my skins Remo is always the best to play on, um, and Promox sticks. I mean, I'm, uh, it, it depends on the gig I'm playing. If I want to play hard, I play with uh, five Bs, nice and thick sticks. Um, and when it's more like jazzy, you know, the vibe is not that big. You know, I play on like seven A's, a little bit smaller sticks. Um, and yeah. Those are the sticks he's used to. <laughs> small one. Ines, I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to ask you what you're playing on because you're just a vocalist. No. <laughs> but um, uh, if 
if if if Nike and Marshall uh, would want to get on the endorsement chain, uh, you can tell them I'm all game, boys. I'm all game. <laughs> okay, so who knows? You know, somebody might pick up on this podcast and go, "Fuck it, this band sounds good. Yeah. So let's let's get them some Nikes." Yeah. <laughs> Fuck the insurance, just give them some clothing. That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> all, right, but, all right, fellas. Um, that was uh, awesome. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out on a Saturday to, to have a chat. And um, yeah. the EPs and the singles, keep them coming. The, it's awesome sound. I'll, 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 I'll tell you this. If the warden, my wife, the warden says, oh, she likes this, you know you're on to a winner. So, so keep them coming. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks man. Oh, we really, really appreciate it. All righty. Cool, guys. Thank well, you thank so much, cool. man. Keep safe, yeah. eh? Thank you, yeah, as thanks, well, man. man. All right. Cheers, man. Cheers.